Hello students. So now we can see what is supervision. Okay, it is very important topic and it's one of the aspect of directing process. Okay, under the functions of management. So what do you mean by supervision? So we can see the definition first. Supervision means guiding and directing the efforts of employees and other resources to accomplish stated work aspect. It is given by Terry and Franklin. So we are guiding the employees and directing the employees and then other resources also. What is our task? main task is to achieve the organizational goal. So that is definition. So now we can see the objectives of supervision. Help the subordinate to do their job skillfully and effectively. We are helping them to achieve the organizational goal. Then develop subordinate capacity to fullest extent. Maximize the utilization of the subordinates. Then promote effectiveness of the subordinate. We have to promote them. Then motivate the subordinate in their career. Further growth can be promoted. Then teamwork. We have to promote the teamwork. Then bridge the gap between workers personal goal and organizational goal. It should be goal side by side, the personal goal and the organizational goal. These all are the objectives of supervision. Now we can see the principles. Principles of supervision is very important. During the university exam, they are usually asking the principles of, it is a routine question. So it should not overburden to any individual. Supervision, it is a guiding process. So it should not give undue pressure on the employees. Then should not exert undue pressure. Okay, unnecessary pressure should not be exerted on the employees. So we have to look on the work, not on the employee. Then should be general and not very close. The overall performance of the employees to be observed. Then calls for good planning and organizing. It should be used for planning and organizing need to understand the problems and the situations and it is a process of cooperation and coordination. So this uh, supervision we are using for the cooperative efforts of the organization and then to solve the problems after identifying that. Then next principle should create suitable climate for productive work. So we have to give a conducive environment for the productive work. Then should communicate to workers freely. So this supervision doesn't mean that we are uh, putting authority over the subordinate, but we have to have a good interpersonal relationship. Then should have a capacity to influence downwards. Downwards means the subordinates. Then should give autonomy to the workers. When they are working, should not uh, put an undue pressure over the employees or the supervision means we have to motivate and guide them. Okay, should autonomy should not be work over the subordinates. Then should encourage the innovation. Let the employees free to uh, uh, innovate new creative ideas over the organization. Then should ensure staff development. That is very important. The staff development of the employees. Then it should be a teaching learning process, give and take process between the superior and the subordinates. So these all are the principles of supervision. I think it is clear. Should provide good leadership. Then we can see the steps, steps in the supervision. First step is definition of job. We have to give a proper guidelines to the employees, subordinates, what type of job they have to give, what type of supervision the supervisor has to perform. Then selection and organization of supervisor activities. Uh, a clear cut policies and procedures to be their protocols, how to supervise, when to supervise, to whom to supervise and uh, what are the methods to be used, all the details to be there in the policy. Then anticipation of difficulties, it should be there in the 
because it is not an easy task to supervise the employees. Okay. Then establishment of criteria for evaluation because they should have a set criteria and their proper guidelines to be there how to evaluate the employee. Then what are the techniques we can use? I think the steps are clear. The techniques a lot of usually the uh, university exam one of the uh, question is supervision techniques what we are the tools and techniques what we are using for the supervision of the subordinates. So we can see that they have given here uh, observation technique and then that may be direct observation or indirect observation and then uh, I will go through this way. Group conferences, you know that individual and group conferences are there. That is a one by one strategy and between a group of staff nurses interact and supervisor as a mentor and she is exchanging the ideas and that is very important this discussion among the uh, employees. So then they can solve the problem. So it is very essential this group conferences. Then individual conferences is one to one conference or discussion that is between the supervisor and maybe the subordinates. I think already you have learned in a separate way these all uh, conferences so I am not going in detail. Then comes anecdotal record also it is a confidential record what we are maintaining written document uh, ongoing specific observation of the employees regarding the knowledge, skill and attitude of the subordinates. This also you have learned as a separate note. Then initial conferences, initial conferences with the when a new employee reached the hospital or joined. So what all guidelines we are giving to that newcomers or uh, a fresher that is coming under the initial conferences. Then control of early experiences that means we are controlling the experiences of the uh, a staff nurse or student nurses who are reaching into our ward or unit. Then assistance with the bedside care. So we have to help the student nurses to help in the bedside uh, or nursing man, uh, care what we are providing the patients during the time. We should know that how to help them the procedures, what are the policies and protocols we are following. Then comes the reassurance of them. If they are fresh or new in the area, especially the student supervision we are using this reassurance to be there. Uh, if they make some mistake we have to reassure and to clarify their doubts. Then supervision of nursing procedures uh, when they are doing, okay that is very important part from the nurse manager we have to supervise that uh, what procedure how they are doing as per the protocol or not. Then conferences already told you then incidental teaching that is time to time teaching uh, whenever they are doing some procedure or a new procedure is uh, there so that time itself we have to teach them that is coming under the incidental teaching. These all are the techniques and other techniques are nursing rounds and then verbal and written reports, then manuals and protocols, then performance evaluation and in service and continuing education also the techniques what is coming under that. Then technical supervision that is there we are supervising the methods are there, uh, the performance of the skill that we are uh, checking or we are supervising that is coming under the technical supervision. Then comes the creative that is the creativity of the subordinates how they are performing the task or innovations are utilized. So different book has given these methods different way so you have to refer any of the text okay that is coming under this. Then comes the cooperative method. That means the supervisor and the subordinate both are involving in the uh, supervision technique that is the cooperative methods. Then authoritative some supervisors they may act as a uh, autocratic or authoritative technique they are utilizing to the 
subordinates evaluation that is the authoritative type then scientific that is based on the scientific uh, rational they are using to evaluate the subordinates then intuitive that is a new method for the creativity it is a part of that how we are utilizing for the another method then task oriented how they are performing the employees performing the task subordinates uh, only we are evaluating that or supervising the work of the subordinates then employee oriented that means how the person is performing the task on the basis of that we are evaluating that is the employee oriented so these all are the methods of supervision now we can see the types of supervision types of supervision that's direct supervision that's mainly on the direct observation on the spot then comes the indirect supervision that's by observing the records and uh, reports maintained by the personnel that's uh, maybe what we have maintained patients records and the documents what we are maintained in the ward then we can see the responsibility or the qualities first we can see what are the qualities of a supervisor it's also another question so they have the qualities are forcefulness integrity and firmness full awareness about the existing situations intelligence and willing to grow good judgment i think the meaning is clear to you you know that forcefulness means she has a firm nature then integrity and firmness she has to make sure that she know that what are the aspect we have to supervise full awareness about the existing situations uh, which area she is going to uh, do the supervision to whom and uh, what are the technical knowledge and then intelligence and willing to grow the supervisor's part she should have it and a good judgment and the ability to delegate duties the supervisor should have a quality to delegate the duties that means reassign the duties to the subordinates that's very important then non interference unless indicated once we have delegated the task to the subordinates so never interfere with the uh, task what they are performing so let them do that with their own creativity then continuous guidance cooperation and coordination of the subordinates during the time of supervision that's another quality sympathetic attitude never criticize the employee during the time of supervision it should have a sympathetic attitude then willingness to adopt new policies and changes because periodical uh, modifications required in the policies and protocols that should be accepted by the supervisor okay then approachability and fair she should be impartial and approachable person these all are the qualities then abilities to work with others others means uh, willingly she has to work with the all types of subordinates or the workers then knowledge of activities techniques and the procedures uh, if once she is going for a supervision she should have thorough knowledge regarding the particular area where she is working example in the surgical ward she should have a knowledge about how to prepare the patients what are the types of cases coming under the surgical area and how to do it how to manage post operative complications everything she should be thorough awareness then only she can supervise the subordinates then objectivity impartiality and fairness in dealing already i told you as any leader or any supervisor should have this basic quality objectivity with the reason only and impartial no partiality and fairness be fair these all are the qualities of a supervisor then i think the major aspect of supervision i have already covered then another area for bsc nursing students the routine uh, maybe it may ask it is the role of a head nurse or unit manager uh, in staff supervision maybe that's another question so the main headings coming under helps the subordinates to know about his job so we have to assist the subordinates 
by giving the job description orientation counseling individual and group conferences training program interpretation of policies by using all this we can uh, uh, make sure that the subordinates know that what is the duty or what type of duty they have to do second step is the help the subordinates to know what is expected of him or her so let them know how we know that what to be expected that means setting some standards objectives quality desired in the output work direction protocols schedules everything to be there and it should be explained to the subordinates then we know that what to be expected and what is the goal to be achieved then third give the subordinate a, an opportunity to do let them perform by good placement delegation of responsibility with authority timely information good working condition that means the resources safety and establishment of food in the personal relationship adequate supplies and equipments so these all are the base for giving the uh, work experience or the workplace experience then create an awareness in the subordinates how he did the job and to make it known to the management namak ariya the final step is the evaluation or the performance appraisal of the employee we should have an effective communication system also and a good report it should have when we are writing some report or the communication it should follow all the principles of communication and then uh, should not be biased so these all are the steps coming under the supervision of staff nurses then help the subordinate to know what he can do to improve his present performance and his future potential uh, that's uh, once the performance evaluation complete id kenya we should give some feedback uh, once if they need a training we have to uh, they let them to undergo a guidance and counseling or continuing education or adequate Uh, in service education program then help in rewarding or punishing the subordinate on their performance okay uh, we have to reward them if it is positive and we have to do not punish directly we have to go through all the steps of the counseling and then training and then we have to give them the punishment okay give the chance to the subordinates on their performance by promotion benefits recognition incentives disciplinary action transfer dismiss okay that's all regarding the supervision of the staff nurses you can learn it go through the slides and revise it next comes the supervision of student nurses that's also another question the head nurse role in the supervision of student nurses so initial conferences already i told you the methods Uh, direct uh, contact one with the star, student nurses for their early experience in the clinical side in the ward so we have to make them help them to have a uh, early experience and orientation to the ward and how to help them to create a, a new orientation of the area experience of the patients and how to do the patients care everything then assistance with the bedside care that means the total care of the patient on the basis of their known to unknown first year second year or third year or fourth year students then reassurance if they make some mistake maybe it's a first experience we have to reassure them and show them the correct technique of performing the procedure then supervision of nursing procedures that's very important especially in the Uh, early period of training we have to monitor them and we have to supervise the procedures that's very important in the supervision of the nursing students train them in the bedside itself how to care to the patients not only the theory what they have learned in the clinical theory classes let them to practice in the clinical area that is a uh, essential part of nursing so incidental teaching time to time the head nurse role to teach them when any new procedure is uh, there so we have to give them a demonstration and uh, we have to teach them also then planned ward teaching we have a lot of ward teaching methods are there 
that means uh, clinical teaching, conferences, and then uh, demonstrations, rounds, anything that should be planned and periodically it should be conducted by the students. So, these all are the steps or points coming under the student supervision. The, I think it is clear. Then comes the supervision venues, informally scheduled meeting and uh, indirectly uh, through remote con communication any venue we can use it routine interaction okay and what are the evidence of the supervision effectiveness positive effect on the patient's outcome and the lack of supervision is harmful to the patient more effective when the trainee is less experienced and the self supervision is not effective uh, quality of relationship between the supervisor and supervisee is probably the single most important factor for the effective supervision behavioral changes can occur quickly uh, that's very important okay then the tips combine supervision with the focused feedback then continuity to be there during the supervision reflection by both the participants that means superior and subordinate then the last part is the what are the characteristics of effective supervisors they should be empathetic any leaders same way supportive flexible interested in supervision track supervisees effectively link theory with the practice engage in joint problem solving interpretative respectful focused practical knowledgeable she should follow the, you know the meaning of all these terms and you can go through it then what are the characteristics of ineffective supervisor the supervisor should not have ethical qualities and supervisor is not suitable allathad should not be uh, rigid low empathy low support failure to consistently track supervisory concern failure to teach or instruct indirect and intolerant closed person lack respect for differences non collegial atmosphere lacking in praise and encouragement sexist emphasize evaluation weakness and deficiency always they are concentrating on the weakness only so these all are the important points coming under the supervision okay i think the topic is clear to you just go through the slides and review that so those who have seen first time the uh, video you just uh, go through the previous videos and uh, subscribe it and uh, learn it okay almost to major important topics only i am going to uh, upload in the youtube okay students okay all the best it's uh, one one of the unit is that in the bsc and post bsc portion so usual question one question can be there from the this area either supervision itself or supervision of student nurses staff nurses or principles of supervision or tools and techniques these all are the four common important questions they usually asking okay bye see you with another slide okay thank you